My name is Ola Oluwa Bamishine. I build houses with uh, containers. We build structures with containers. When, when, we, when we go out to live outside, of course, you have to pay rent. And rent, rent is expensive. Rent is expensive anywhere. So basically, uh, in England, the council or local government has areas dedicated to uh, council housing. Housing for people that, that, you know, that are not so well to do, you understand? They call them council housing. So these council housing, once they've been filled and utilized, uh, basically, uh, and they are no more in use. These houses are now let off. Uh, they are let off on the, at a subsidized rate. That's basically how I came into this. So instead of paying full rent outside, I went to live in a type of council flat that gave me a subsidized rate. Now this council flat was made out of containers, and basically that's where all of this started from. With every other Every other, every other construction, there's a standard type of uh, workers. You're going to need carpenters, you're going to need plumbers, you're going to need electricians, you're going to need, uh, you know, who else do we need? Uh, electricians, plumbers, tilers, you know, basically everyone that goes into a normal build, every, every skill that goes into a normal build will be utilized in building a, a, a container structure. Normally what we do is build what we call a white view. What we're sitting in right now is called a white view. So we build it in, we put in all the fittings, all the, the wiring, everything basically for you to come in and put your own stamp on it. So we will leave this with, we, we haven't done any of the lights or fittings in here now, and we're, we're at that stage, but we will leave it with all the lights working, all the plumbing and fittings working. So basically the client comes in, it turns on the water, the water runs, it turns on the light, the lights work, and then they can now come in and put in the fittings, the furniture, and then make the space they run. So basically, we leave them with a blank canvas. Uh, we call it a white view. Living in one inspired my business. I lived in a container structure, schooling in, uh, in England, uh, and this basically fomented everything you see here today. Uh, at the time, I saw that this was a good option in view of the fact that I lived in Lagos and Lagos being a port city, there's a whole bunch of supply of containers around. And you know, having lived in one and seen the cost versus, uh, I mean, cost of rent one versus a, a typical structure, I felt it was a viable option to start here in Nigeria. Container prices keep moving. Uh, when we started this, we used to buy containers for about 300,000 for a for 20 foot container and for about 400,000 for a 40 foot container. Nowadays, as at today, a uh, 20 foot container can set you back about 390,000 and a 40 foot container can set you back about 580,000. Those are, those are our prices now, of course. You know, these are based on negotiation and, and deals that we have with our suppliers. They will cost other people differently. Yes. Containers are, I mean, a 20 foot container now is about, it's just over two tons. And uh, a container is not particularly the best item to be used as a mobile structure. Now, for a single container, that's a single container structure, you can choose to, you can choose to move that structure around if you want to, but it's not a structure that will be moved around every day. Now, where containers help is that in a city like Lagos, where land is at a premium, you can't find you can't find land to do anything, to build a house, sell a shop, you can't find land. What a container offers you is a temporary, is a temporary structure that's seen as a temporary structure where you can deploy into a location and then conduct your business. And if you're not needed in that location anymore, you can move that container away from that location without having to lose your investment. That is what containers offer you. Uh, a lot of our people that you know sell market, you know, they're always on the sides of the roads, you know, you just want to get to where there's a lot of football. For people like that, you find out that the council will come in and just destroy the shops, you know, when they have them move or when they want, want to have them move. But then the container offers a solution now where you can build your shop all in one and then basically carry it from place to place if you want to move. Uh, I know, I know a particular client that uh, she sells Ashoebi, so clothes and stuff. And she's been in 10 different shops in Lagos. In, Niger in Lagos, they give you shops as a bare carcass. You need to set up the shop, you know, putting your lighting, putting your fittings. But then when you're leaving, you can't take 
your shop with you. You can't you can't remove those things because by doing that you you damage it. it it's of no use to anyone. So in a sense, she had set up shop for ten different landlords. I mean, costing up quite a lot of money. But then with the container solution now, she can build her own boutique into a container. And if she ever needed to leave a location, she can just find another suitable location that could house her boutique. If she ever needed to leave, now she doesn't have to, to build a shop over and over again. She can just build a shop that can be moved intermittently, not on a day-to-day -day basis. That's what containers are. Basically, we source containers. Now, uh, everybody knows where containers are. Containers are sourced in a papa. So we source our containers from a papa from well reputed suppliers now the idea about using containers there's a bit of a drawback containers are used to transport all sorts of goods and services i mean all sorts of goods now these goods can be either you know uh healthy goods that healthy for human beings or unhealthy if you put yourself into that space containers are also used for dumping so dumping radioactive material dumping electrical waste so when we're sourcing containers, we're very careful about the type of containers that we go for. Uh, in doing this, we make sure that the integrity of the building remains for the life of the structure. You don't want to get a container that has a history or has a history of being put. There'll be some chemicals in there. And then you go take that container without checking the history and then you build a structure in there and then people start to get sick. So we first of all make sure that the integrity of the container is tip top before we now start to, before we purchase the container. Once that's done, then we, we start to cut the container based on the specific design that has been agreed on by us and the clientele. Once that's done, we frame the containers. I'm sure we'll show you a few bits and bobs about how we how we cut and frame the container. We cut, we frame, after that, then we treat the container. Uh, containers are prone to, container, I mean, metal in general is prone to rust. So you want to make sure that you treat the container itself and make sure that, you know, it remains there for a long period of time. Once that is done, you're taking out what you don't need and you're putting what you need in terms of doors and windows, I mean, sp window spaces. Then the next step is to put in all the aesthetics, your flooring, your electrical, your plumbing, glass, roof, you know, all those things that make it, uh, you know, that viable structure that you're looking for. Uh, another part of working with containers because of the type of climate that we're in is uh, something I'm sure we will come up to is uh, the heat factor and how we control heat. So insulation is also a big part of what we do. We're in the tropics here in Nigeria and you know heat is a big factor. And as you know, metal conducts a lot of heat. Now there are various ways we can we can we can stop heat. Uh, by creating basically what we call like a heat shield. Basically, you create a space within the container that keeps the walls on the outside, and then you have your own regulated space on the inside. Now this can be done by using materials starting from plywood, as cheap as plywood board all the way to what we normally call you know pop those 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 materials act as insulation material but then there are more specific materials that we can use for what we use in house and for the type of climate that we have which is a hot climate we use a material called rock wool rock wool is like a fiber type of material that is used in slats and placed along the walls of the container right before we we board up the container and put in all our walls now this what this does is creates a vapor and heat shield between the container walls and the inside of the, of the structure, trapping all that heat in between the walls. And then, of course, you have uh, a structure that has a, a, a insulation rating as good as or even better than uh, a normal structure. The pros and cons of living in a container space. Uh, let's start with the let's start with the pros. Let's start with the pros. Uh, quick to deploy. Quick to deploy feeds into the price. So two most important things it's quick to deploy and this fits into the price if you if you if you're there longer and you're building for longer then it's going to cost you more those are those are the two biggest problems that people find with with building structures so uh speed and price those are my two pros for building or living in a or, or using a, or being, living in a shipping container space for cons the most or the biggest con of a living in a shipping container space is i think heat control and like I said, heat control has been mitigated by, of course, the insulation that's used in the unit to, to of course, make the space more, more, more livable. Another pro of using container, uh, container structures or living in a container structure is that container structures can easily be stacked. You can stack a container structure eight high, eight containers high without need for for, for reinforcement. Now, if you see how containers are shipped on a, on a boat across the seas, they're stacked quite high. And these containers are going 
in turbulent waters and you find out that these containers get to their destination without falling off, you know, without falling off the ship or falling off themselves. So containers can easily be stacked like Lego. You know, that gives an opportunity to build a multi-story structure without having to think about the engineering behind it because the container itself has already engineered itself into a place where it can easily be used in such a way. If I'm a consumer looking to build my own space, like build it from scratch, I will look at time as a function. Now, another illustration, I would like to use myself as illustration. My dad built his house, his dream home. I mean, dream home. Now, this house is massive, it's really good, well built, brick and mortar built, but it took him about 10 years, 10 years to build. Now, you can't pull a figure on a structure that took you 10 years to build. There'll be so many moving parts. You can't even say, oh, this is the budget I started with anymore, or this is the budget I'm going to use to complete this building. Because at that point in time, you've lost, you've lost the, 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 the budget. Whatever happens, happens. Because you, you've taken such a long time to complete the build. Uh, with containers, we, we say that the shortness in deploying that build insulates you from whatever can happen that is out of your your control so you're insulated by government policies you're insulated by from insulation you're insulated from you know things that happen that would set off your budget on a construction project like this so let's say you start a structure in january and at december you haven't finished that structure with containers i can start a structure in january and be done in february i can be done in march now what does that do for me the investor that would mean that i can start a structure finish it in time and then start to utilize that structure and then start to get the returns back. That is a better way of looking at it rather than just looking at what is the cost of the structure itself? What is the cost of the structure, just building the structure itself? Because it will cost you anything. You can start off with a budget of 5 million naira and at the end of the day, it will cost you 10 million naira. Now, this could be as a result of a whole bunch of factors, micro and macroeconomic factors. Uh, let's just say, give for an example, look at the NSAS protest. Anyone building during the NSAS protest will notice that the cost of materials went up because the NSAS protest stopped and disrupted the value chain and uh, uh, the supply chain. And by doing that, that affects what happens in a construction site or in a construction build. So for us, um, we never look at it as either or. Uh, and not to be political about the question, uh, it depends on the type of structure you would like to put, to put forward. So let's say like for like structure, a like for like structure, a container structure is more expensive. It's definitely more expensive because what you get here is speed. You get speed to deployment. And with speed, with anything else, with anything in life, with speed, it becomes more expensive. So basically with a container, the containers already have everything. A container has four walls, a ceiling, and a floor. That already puts me ahead of you know anybody else building with a brick and mortar so basically the only thing i need to do now is take out what i don't want in that container or i don't want this little space here i take it out i pull a door here i don't want this space here i take it out i pull a window here so that that has already sped me up i don't need to build strong foundations because a container itself is a pretty rigid structure so um basically looking at it uh from a standpoint of uh, brick and mortar uh, the fact that I don't have to build foundations as study for a, a brick and mortar build means that I'm already 15, 20% of the time ahead than a, than, a typical, than a typical structure. Now, with that also, I have set dimensions, set dimensions that, that, that are easy to remember and that, that are hard to go out of. So a container floor now is about 25 square meters. The entire container, 44 container we're sitting in one right now, is about... 66 square meters so basically in knowing that i know i need 66 square meters of board i need this amount of wood i can calculate everything i need buy it all at once and then just start to install that is that is a big big factor in what we do everyone thinks it's made of metal and of course it's going to rust now containers are made with a special metal it's called cotton steel cotton steel basically gets harder the I mean, layman terms, gets harder the more it rusts. So basically, the molecular structure of corten gets harder the more it rusts. That is why corten steel or containers are used to ship goods across the seas. And now, what do we know about the seas? The seas are salty. 
And we know what salt does to metal. It rusts metal. Now I'm gonna ask everyone a question. Who has seen a rusted down container before? I mean, like literally rusted down. But have you seen a rusted down ship? Yes, you have. Yes, you have. If you put a ship on the water and you don't paint it, the, the, the ocean will, will literally eat the ship and it will sink. But containers would, would sink into the bottom of the ocean and they would remain there for years. The, the only thing that would happen is that the sea would build around it, but the, 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 the container itself would remain there forever. We call those single structure containers. A single structure container can be put on a truck bed and then built into place. So if you see containers, the way they transport it across Lagos, you see them on a truck bed. Just the way it is on a truck bed, you can have the container sit just there and then you build your structure on top of that and then move it around as you wish. Well, like I said, it's not the best. It's uh, it's a heavy piece of equipment to be moving around town. So, you know, within Lagos, which is a very busy town. But if it's something that uh, that you you would like to do, it's, it's not in the realms of impossibility. You know, you of course have to buy yourself a truck or truck bed and then have the container sit on it. So once you have that, it's something that you can easily move around from place to place. But for, for movable structures, we would advise that people go for, you know, a movable van, uh, structure. Those ones are made for you know for moving businesses around, and they just they just fit better into the city rather than a container structure. You know, moving around from place to place. Yes, we look at this in two different ways: commercial spaces and res residential spaces. We look at container spaces by the amount of time people will spend in that space. That will determine a whole bunch of things: the amount of insulation you have to put in there, the level of finish. So for commercial space, which requires maybe about six to eight hours of people being within the space. Uh, a space like that for a 20 foot container, you're looking at about 2 million, 3 million and upwards. Now that also determines, that also, that also, that's also determined by the type of design and the complexity of the, des of the design. If there's a lot of walls on the inside, a lot of cutouts, it gets more, more expensive. The more you put in it, the more it gets, the more expensive it gets. We, we normally suggest our clients to leave things open plan. Uh, containers are already uh, quite disadvantaged by the space within. So you don't want to put in any more walls than necessary. Uh, we, we advise and our designs follow a, a clean open plan build that, that makes the space even seem larger than it feels. We, we like floor to ceiling windows that, that open up the space, open up the space to light. The most important thing uh, with a container is trying to remove that claustrophobic feeling that some people might get. And in the way we build it, the way we build it with our big uh, window facades, you, you won't be able to notice, you won't be able to notice that at all. Just like with every other typical structure, electricity, plumbing, all of that, you know, comes from outside into the unit, just like with any other structure. Now for our structures that we would deploy, single structures that we deploy, uh, of course, plumbing, piping, all of that is built into the unit. Now the unit, of course, is, uh, uh, is brought to a site and then plugged into the utilities that are already that are already on the site. We've seen that this uh, container uh, create a, a solution for people that don't have space, um, can't afford typical space or typical brick and mortar space. We've also noticed that there's a niche, there's a gap in the market here uh, for smaller spaces because in Nigeria, everything's big. Everything is larger than life. You know, if you're not building a big structure, then you're not building, you know. So we, we want to create another option for people. People that want to build small, people that don't want to build massive structures. You know, we, we believe that there's a lot of wasted land, even in Lagos, there's a lot of wasted land. And we know that these structures with temporary structures can be utilized to generate even more, you know, for people that, that, that would like to use them. And also create more, more space, more capacity within, you know, the real estate market. Because right now, if you, if you step out there and say you wanted to go look for a shop, it, it will be very difficult to find something that would that will meet up to your expectations unless you wanted to spend a whole a whole lot of money. So we, we're looking to create another space in the market uh, for 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 smaller structures and smaller structures um, that uh, we feel are more viable now than bigger structures. So basically in Nigeria, you know, um, building in Nigeria is very difficult. You either build big or you don't build at all. You either build a massive structure, take a look, go outside your house, take a look around. Every structure is massive. Now, that's that's for a reason, I'm sure. But we also believe that there, there is a space for smaller structures. There are people that want to build nowadays that just simply cannot build. After they've afforded the land, they can't do anything else, you know, after affording the land. So next step will be, 
can we build simple temporary structures on existing land, on wasted land, and see what we can do with, with that? Can we build simple, easily deployable structures on these on these parcels of land and then use them as you know rented property for you know commercial spaces for residential spaces these are the kind of questions that we're trying to answer with with container structures because we know that you know there, there has to be another way there has to be another angle like this not everyone has to build a massive structure before they say they own a house not everybody has to have a 30-year mortgage I mean, people would actually take up a 30-year mortgage some people die before paying up that mortgage. You want to give people a different option. Why not own your house in seven years? Why not own your house in five years? A smaller house. You know, because our parents build massive houses. We're all out of the house now. They, they barely go into two rooms. They barely go into two of those rooms in the house. They will have 10, 15 room houses and they barely go into two rooms. Some of them wish they, they hadn't built that much. Some of that money is still being used for other things. So we want to create an avenue where people are thinking five years down the line, 10 years down the line, I'm going to be building the structure. Do I want to build this massive structure that 10 years down the line is going to be, 15 years down the line, it's going to be surplus to requirement and I'm not going to be able to do anything to scale it back. I'm not going to be able to do anything to, to, to reduce my investment. But if I build small now and I needed more later, then I think that's a good place to start rather than just building massive capacity. And then at the end of the day, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't really need that. So a, a, a temporary structure basically uh, refers to what it's used for on the land it's placed on. So uh, we're referring to temporary and permanent structures uh, in the view of how land is in Lagos, in a city like Lagos, uh, land is very, it's a premium, it's at a premium. And you can't find land to do anything. You know, you have to spend quite a lot of money. But then what we've also noticed that there's a lot of wasted land. Take a drive into Ikoi. There's a lot of wasted land. This wasted land can be used for a whole bunch of things. Now, where temporary structures come in is that land that has not been used or utilized in the, in the last 10, 5, 15 years, I can put a temporary structure in that. If it's a house, I can put another, I can put one bedroom in there. So to be part of a house, to be a boys' quarters, could be anything. But the idea about it is that there's a lot of wasted land that we can put temporary structures on. So basically, we see we see wasted land everywhere. Wasted land can be car parks in front of a mall. Wasted land can be backyards in someone someone's house, a backyard. Some people could build a house and there'll be massive massive stick in the back. Wasted land can be government land that hasn't been used or touched in years. Wasted land or, or unutilized land. Let's not say wasted land. I will not use the word wasted land. Let's say unutilized land can be estates in an estate. So you wouldn't consider it as viable land for you to do your business. But then with a container structure or temporary structure that you, you can easily move away from that space if required, then it opens up those those areas that are not viable for a typical structure to a container structure and i think that is a that is a massive massive uh aspect of this that no one's looking at yet uh that, that the fact that a land that cannot be that cannot be used to deploy a brick and mortar i could deploy a ready-made container structure that is brought in plugged in and i can do my business and if two years three years down the line someone says i should move i can move my container all of these are done to request. So basically we will build the structure to a place where, like I said, you can now come in and put in those, those, those extras to make the space, you know, fit into what you want. But like I said, we will have done the pre-planning, the mold, we will have built the mold for you to now add on those extras that make the space what you desire. Uh, basically, uh, processes start from uh, sourcing the container, sourcing the right container. It's very important to source the right container because containers are used to carry things that might not be the best things that you want to be near to, you know, dangerous materials, chemicals. You need to be sure the type of containers that you use. Once that's done, then you build yourself a base, a foundation for your container. Uh, once that's completed and, found, and your containers are sitting pretty, sitting nicely, then you basically take out what you don't need. You know, take out sheets of metal for doors, for windows, you do your framing. Once that's done, you have your door and your window. The good thing about container is that it already has a ceiling, it already has walls on the floor. So basically, the only thing you have to do is just take out what you don't need for your doors and your windows. And then the next step is to put in all those things that will make the space viable. Insulation, cladding, framing, floor, 
you know, plumbing, electricals, a roof, all of that stuff is what completes the building.